Happy Friday, first grade. You've made it through another week of online learning. Yay! You just have a few things that we're going to do today for our literacy lesson. And then make sure that you're also reading books at home, playing games, and doing lots of other things besides just looking at your computer and working hard. We know that you guys are all trying your best, and we still want you to have a good time and keep those brains having fun too, okay? But today, for our literacy lesson, we're going to be doing comparing and contrasting. Remember, when we compare, we look at how things are similar. When we contrast, we look at how they are different. And we're going to be looking at our books today, night and day, and going back to a walk on the moon. Now, we really remember a lot about night and day because we've been reading it this whole week. We might have forgotten a little bit about a walk on the moon. So I'm going to have the computer go back and reread our book, A Walk on the Moon. If you need to remember, you can go back and look at previous videos to hear about night and day if you think your brain needs a refresher on that as well. I'm going to have us reread A Walk on the Moon, and then we will come together and be able to do a comparison and contrast using a Venn diagram. Okay, follow along with the computer. A Walk on the Moon On July 16th, 1969, the spacecraft Apollo 11 blasted off into space. Three astronauts inside the spacecraft took off for the moon. They wanted to be the first people to ever land on the moon. Millions of people watched on TV as Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin made their four-day journey. The spacecraft was launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Armstrong and Aldrin moved into a smaller craft called the Eagle for the moon landing. The two men saw that the eagle was heading for a huge pile of rough boulders or rocks. They were able to steer it to a smooth area. A cloud of moon dust rose up as the eagle landed safely. People back home were glued to their TVs. They saw Neil Armstrong climbed down the eagle's ladder. He became the first person to step onto the moon. He described the soil as a fine, dusty powder. The moon has less gravity than Earth, so bouncing around was easier than walking. When Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon, he said, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. For almost three hours, Armstrong and Aldrin explored the moon's surface. All around them were craters or large holes. They did not find any water, but there were lots of rocks. They collected moon soil and rocks to take back to Earth. Then the astronauts rejoined the Apollo 11 spacecraft and headed home. The astronauts left an American flag on the moon. It is a reminder of the great accomplishment. Okay, so now that we went back and remembered our story, A Walk on the Moon, and we've been looking at our story night and day all week, we should have a pretty good understanding of both these texts to be able to compare and contrast. And what I always think of first when I'm comparing and contrasting is the type of story it is. What type of story is night and day? Is it a fictional story, one we made up? Or is it an informational text, something that's teaching us? It's an informational text. What about a walk on the moon? Was that teaching us something about real life? Absolutely. So Miss Kelly put in the middle here that these were nonfiction 
texts. What I mean by that is that they were true stories about how we actually walked on the moon and what really happens to make night and day. They're both nonfiction, or I could have said informative stories because they teach us about things. Now, I also want to take a look at the stories themselves. Was a walk on the moon very long of a story? It's not very long of a story. It's only these two pages here. I don't have any of the vocabulary I saw before. I don't see a table of contents. There aren't any chapters. But, you know, I do see lots of pictures and lots of captions. Hmm, let me think about my story night and day. When I'm looking at my story night and day, I do have a table of contents. I have lots of vocabulary, an introduction, chapters, and a conclusion. Hmm, that's pretty different from my story, A Walk on the Moon, but I also see lots of pictures. And do you guys see any of these captions around? Yeah, okay. I think that's a lot of important information I can try and put into my Venn diagram to compare and contrast. Okay, so I know that both my stories are nonfiction and informative. Was there anything else that I noticed both stories had? Yeah, I noticed that both stories used a lot of captions and photos. They use captions and photos to give us lots of information. Okay, so now that I have a couple things that they have in common, that they're really similar, I need to think what's different about a walk on the moon and what's different about night and day. Well, a walk on the moon, they didn't use chapters. It was a shorter story. So I can say something like it was a short text without chapters. Is that the same for night and day? No. So what Miss Kelly put was I said it uses chapters to talk about many topics because in a walk on the moon, we're just talking about a moon and astronauts In night and day. We talk about lots of different things. Then I also added night and day has a table of contents because that's something I didn't see over here. So I might even add over here. No table of contents. Okay, Miss Kelly left three blank spots. That's your job today is to be thinking about what is different about a walk on the moon and night and day and how are they similar. But don't worry, Miss Kelly's come up with a question to help you think about what you could add to my Venn diagram. I want you to think, what does a walk on the moon teach us about? What does night and day teach us about? So I want you over here. What does a walk on the moon teach us about? What does night and day teach us about? And do they have anything in common? Look carefully at the pictures and I bet you're gonna see something that they have in common that both stories talk about or teach us about. That'll be your literacy work for the day. I'm gonna keep going to writing, but don't forget to send me this work. Okay, so now we have finished our writing. We added all the components. We went back and checked our work with cops. Today is a day to celebrate this writing. So what we're gonna be doing today is giving ourselves compliments. You're gonna give yourself a compliment. I did a great job when, mm. Ms. Kelly is gonna model how you do this. First off, you need to have your draft in front of you. So here's my story. I'm gonna read it to myself and then think, where did I do a really good job? And I'm gonna give myself a compliment. So let me first start off by reading my story. Amazing Birds by Miss Kelly. Did you know that there are over 10,000 types of birds? In my opinion, birds are amazing. One reason is birds have hollow bones, which make them able to fly. Another reason that birds are amazing is there are many kinds of birds with all different sizes and colors. For example, ducks are much bigger than hummingbirds, but they are both types of birds. 
Now you know why birds are amazing. Hmm. I know I need to give myself a compliment and I can think of what was something that either I really struggled with and I think I did a good job on or even what was my favorite part? What did I really like about my writing? And I have a couple compliments for myself actually. I did a great job when I added a really interesting topic sentence. I told them there are over 10,000 types of birds and I thought that was such an interesting topic sentence. It really brought in my reader. Then I wanna give myself another compliment. I think I did a great job when I added an example. I used for example to support my reasons. It wasn't on my anchor chart. I didn't have to do it, but I did and add an example and it made my writing so much better. Your turn first grade. I want you to read aloud your writing that you've done this week and give yourself a compliment. If you can or have time, you can even read to your parents or siblings or any family member and see if they have a compliment for you as well. I can't wait to see these final drafts. Have a great Friday, first grade.